Good afternoon, I'm Stephen Marland from National Grid Partners. Good afternoon, I'm Michelle Finn, co founder and CEO of Dash. So, National Grid Partners is National Grid's corporate venture capital and innovation function for National Grid. Our mandate and strategy is to help support the business in identifying disruptive technologies to future proof our business, but also to help support our sustainability goals and our sustainability agenda going forward. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of our improvements that we're going to try and make through sustainability and our sustainability challenge. Most companies have a very complex set of sustainability goals. They're interlinked and interrelated. If we take, for example, carbon abatement and carbon management, that is interrelated with land um, sustainability as well. And so for us, land sustainability is part of our targets in our sustainable charter. We've targeted a 10% improvement in land over the next decade. And in the UK, that will be brought forward to 2026. It's not just National Grid that sets these pledges. There's many companies which set pledges. In fact, half of all large organisations have set targets and pledges around land sustainability and biodiversity. Unfortunately, only 5% of those companies have actually got a, a, an effective way of measuring and managing their performance against those targets. So, for National Grid, we try to identify what are the problems and the barriers associated with making, making that a, a reality. How do we solve this problem? And the first is simply about having consistent standards, which are being developed in the UK right now for biodiversity. But then when we move away from that, we need a, a simple, cost-effective and fast way of measuring land in a consistent fashion. And then once we have data, then we need to manage that data consistently over time so that we can track what we're doing, automate some of the processes behind it, and make sure that we're optimising our planning routines. So to find a solution for that, we turned our attention to identifying whether or not we could deploy satellite information to cut down the cost of measuring land and automate some of the processes which are very manually intensive to them. Second to that, we then looked at could we build a platform and in that platform manage our ecological data, our planning data, and then help us manage a performance system, a system of record to help us make this accountable and auditable into the future. We wanted to bring that to life. And for us to bring that to life, we partnered with AI Dash and with our own National Grid property people to develop a solution, not just for ourselves, but hopefully to bring it to life for the market and others as well. And so I'm going to move over and introduce AI Dash and Abhishek Singh from AI Dash, the CEO, uh, which is going to talk about the exciting news of bringing this not just to National Grid, but publicly to the market. Abhishek. Thanks, thanks to you. Hello, everyone. So, as we discussed, as Steve was talking about measuring the biodiversity and improving and getting 10% improvement by 2030, how do we achieve that? is an important question. But before how, we need to know how much we only are there today. That is measuring the biodiversity today. That is the genesis of our product and our company. So what we do primarily is that we are satellite and AI powered operations, maintenance and sustainability company for industries with geographically distributed assets. That includes utility, energy, transportation, mining, oil and gas, construction company. These companies have assets which are distributed across the globe. US alone has 7 million miles of power lines, 2.4 million miles of pipelines. How do we have, you have operate and maintain and measure anything on sustainability for such large assets? That is what we do as a dash. We are a pretty young company. We started our operations in 2019. At the moment, we have office. In our US offices are in San Jose, Virginia, in Western Virginia, Austin in Texas. We are setting up our office in London next week. It's the very right time. And we have our office in Bangalore in India. We are as, a, as of today we are a team of 125 people. We will be 200 people in the next few months. In terms of customers, we have around 35 customers spread across the globe. 42 of 50 US states we have customers in. We have customers in Canada, 
We have customers in UK, although map here is wrong, we don't have customers in Ireland yet. So <laughs> pardon me for that. But yeah, we have customers in UK, we have customers in Australia, we have customers in South America. Antarctica is one island where we don't have customers. The well, most important thing for us is our partner network and our investors. Boston Consulting Group is one of our partners. ESRI is one of our tech partners. We are a member of OGC Group. As far as our investors are concerned, National Grid still is here. So National Grid is one of our investor and also on our, on our board. We have investment from BGB in our series B round. In our series B round, G2 Venture, that's a part of us in Silicon Valley joined, joined us. And the round was joined by BGB and National Grid. So this is brief about AI. So the, what we are talking here today in COP26 is all about sustainability. We see very less paper here, most bottles are glass bottles. Sustainability is important for us. But then we have to act, we cannot just talk. Right? So we'll act and we'll tell what we're trying to do here. This is a small video which will talk about what our product is all about. The theme is very simple. We have storms, droughts, wildfires happening increasingly more and more as each year passes. Climate is a major factor for that. Climate is becoming worse every day. People are suffering because of it. Now, we don't want to see this kind of world where Antarctica becomes a desert. I mean, it looks like a joke that could be possible. But to solve, to solve it is what we do. Intelligent sustainability management system it monitors land, water, and air for sustainability goals to measure, enhance, track, report, and ops. These are some of the screenshots of our application works. This is where we are doing the biodiversity measurement and monitoring. This is where we are doing methane or greenhouse gas emission monitoring and measurement and helping industries meet those targets for biodiversity, greenhouse gas emission, natural property, etc. It's a complete work. We don't give you the data and let you figure out what to do. We are a workflow solution. We give a full-fledged workflow powered by static analytics and AI, which you can use to create your sustainability report every year and submit it to regulators or put it in your annual financial reports. So this is more about what our product does. And this is what, if all companies which are signing these commitments for 2030, all companies start using such a product like IBMS, you'll get a much more greener and cleaner product. That is our goal, and we will achieve it. Now, a quick snapshot of fact sheet of our product. So as I told earlier, we measure sustainability metrics for land, here and what we not only measure but we provide a complete workflow to measure, enhance, track, report, and observe. The solution is available as a SaaS subscription which you can buy, or you can deploy it on, on, onto your premise as a perpetual license. The system comprises of a web application and a mobile application to support the workflow. Too. The industries we serve include utility, energy, mining, transportation, oil and gas construction, water, and waste. And this is not a pilot technology. This is deployed and proven. And it's currently deployed on over 1,000 land, land sites for biodiversity region and over 3,000 well sites for greenhouse gas emission. So, so I will open the forum for any questions you have. Uh, I think we have requested audience to submit questions to okay, so that's it. And so you want to answer this? Yeah. The question was, how do we measure biodiversity scores? And the standards for biodiversity in the UK have been set by Natural England on behalf of UK government, uh, which are currently going through the final phase of, of release uh, into the market right now. So that's a, a sort of standard way of, of calculating the habitat. So if you can identify the habitat, you can calculate a scoring mechanism that sits behind that. And the multiplication of that works out, we can automate that in the system. 
So it's a, once you've got the methodology and that's been set by government, that's pretty straightforward to calculate. Yeah. And whatever metrics we have for UK, the metrics for European Union or US will be slightly different. So the model is trained to follow the metrics as per the geographic conditions. How accurate? How accurate is it? Yeah, I mean, from the data which we have seen with National Grid, our results were around 98% accurate. And that's correct. And that was actually more accurate, I should say, than a human being mapping themselves using aerial photography. So I think what we're doing here is stripping out some of the potential error that humans can put in. And these are trained ecologists, such as that. So we're stripping that, that potential subjectivity away. How does the solution work with people, if at all? How does the solution work with? How does the solution work with people? With people? Yes. Okay. That's a complex question. <laughs> <laughs> so when by people, if you mean the users of the system? As in uh, sustainability experts. Okay. So do you need people to go and measure things as well? Or can this do everything? Okay. That's a, okay. Now I, I understand the question. Suppose we have a parcel of land. Now as part of our target, we have to improve the biodiversity of this parcel of land by 10% or 23 So we measure which piece, portions of the land which is a different habitat classification. The measurement is also done by satellite imagery, so you don't have to send a person on the crew to measure that using a measuring tape. So it's all fully automated. Lands are measured, classifications are done, the scores are computed, reports are generated and given to the end user. Of biodiversity. So, as such, no human intervention is required to really do any of the activities. I should add that, sorry, at National Grid, the way in which we deploy this is we want to take the, the stuff which can be automated out. Um, and that's the measurement part. Where we want to focus our time and effort is how do we plan and focus on making that impact and delivery? So, that's what people are, are using the platform to, to optimize planning. How do you measure GHG emissions? Yeah, actually people find it very interesting and they think it's a fiction when we say that we can measure emission coming out of your well from satellite. The fact of the matter is that the technology today has reached that level of measure. The satellites can find not only the volume of emission happening but also the precise location. To give an example, GHG sat is one such satellite provider which has those satellites which can measure the emission. So we use satellite data from there for the same. And how many customers do you have in the industry? So as I talked about earlier also, at this moment we have 35 customers, enterprise customers today, and we are adding five customers every month. Our customer comprise of utility, oil and gas, energy, water, waste water, Transportation, construction, and mining. What's the price of this? We price our solution based on the number number of land sites you have and the number of the area in hectares of the land you have. The typical pricing is around fifty thousand pounds for around thousand land sites. This the, the pricing has been kept such that it is many times cheaper than what it will cost you to do the same thing manually. What are the savings and benefits in this The direct saving which comes is in terms of how much money it would have costed you doing it manually. So this is almost an order of magnitude cheaper. So it's of $500,000, it's of £5,000, you're spending £50,000. That's a direct saving. Then there are some incremental saving in terms of if we don't do this activity, then the penalty for not doing that could be significantly higher. We still don't add some. So, on the next side. It will vary from different company to different company. The solution is designed for organizations with large land holdings, large estates, or multiple numerous sites. And, and so it is designed on a kind of base of a thousand sites, fifty thousand pounds software as a service per year. That works out to be 
you know, over a five-year period, at least half the price of what you could find alternative solution. <laughs> So we are headquartered in San Jose, but we have offices, besides San Jose, we have office in Western Virginia, in Austin, Texas, in Bangalore, in Bangalore, in India, and we are setting up our office in London next week. Do you think you will be able to serve the public sector as well with this solution? Region, cities, governments? This is very interesting, and I would say that this entire initiative of climate change, of which COP26 is promoting, is about partnership or synergy between public and private players. So the public or the government is making these regulations, which the industries are willingly agreeing to abide by. Right? So by serving a private utility, we are indirectly serving the government. In addition, any project which happens in a city, for example, if the project, depending on jurisdiction, if the project is owned by government, they have to abide by the same regulation for state improvement on sustainability. So in those scenarios, we will be working directly with the company, with the public government. So it will depend on the who is owning that activity or that land with whom we will be working, but it's a partnership. Everybody is involved.